This video has two subjects. Uh, one is how to make a quick and dirty map to, you, to paint an object in a software like ZBrush or 3D Coat, but without concerning too much about the UV in a first stage. Uh, the second subject is um, a way to um, unwrap subdivided objects uh, so there's a good correspondence between the polygons in the UV space and the polygons in the 3D object. Uh, for these operations I'll use plugins like Mesh Recognitor which um, changes the point order of an object and PLG UV. Uh, maybe Niti Sara copy and paste UV, I don't know. Um, also I'll use later a 3D code trial to show some operations concerning uh, UV and baking textures. Um, so the quick and dirty method to make UV consists basically in unwelding all polygons. Okay, going to PLG make UV, edit and make UV. Then relaxing, aligning and packing. This must be on, and I'm going to use this value here. Okay, it's gonna be, it's gonna take a while. If I put 128, it will be faster. Uh, okay, so here we go. Fast and easy. Uh, this UV has a good coverage, uh, so it means that also the texture um, you use will have a good coverage. Uh, of course, there. There are gaps here, but normally uh, I have better results with this kind of UV in coverage uh, than normal unwrapping. Sometimes I get um, 60 and 70 percent of coverage, which which are good values. Uh, so this is done. Okay, so subject number one, it's more or less done. Subject number two is a problem about using PLG straight away for subdivision objects, sub, uh, subdivided objects. So uh, notice for example these polygons here, okay, uh, they all seem squares, they are all squares in UV space but here they only these ones are squares and these ones are not, okay. Uh, why this, this happens because they were picked from the faces um, state, not from subdivision state. Okay, uh, so this will happen all around. So for example, um, notice these polygons here correspond to these polygons here. So uh, they are not so thin in subdivision mode as they are in faces mode. Okay, the problem with this is because you're saying that you only need this space of pixels to fill to match all this space in the pol in the 3D object polygon. So uh, it's not going to be good. Another example are known planar polygons like this one, which show up in the UV space like something like a triangle. Okay, but in subdivision the this one looks a bit more like a trapezium or a rectangle, so um, the distortion caused by the subdivision it's not taken into account by the PLG. Okay, uh, so if your object, final object, is subdivided, this is it's going to be a, a trouble. So a way to get around this um, is this. Um, maybe there are better ways and faster uh, but this is the one I know. So basically you I copy it twice here and I change to sub patch so tab twice to go to sub patch, go to options, sub patch divisions one, to set to one and I freeze. Okay, what happens when I freeze is that um, the faces in faces mode, this object is going to look like this one in subdivision, but actually he is like this, and this one is like this. But this one, when subdivided, it's quite close. 
Okay. So this way, when I use PLG, uh, the distortion of the subdivision uh, will be taken into account. Okay, but uh, after I want to recover the, um, this shape, so to do that, I'm going to use background to morph. But background to morph uh, doesn't work uh, now because I freezed this mesh. Okay, uh, and when I freeze this the mesh, uh, the point order changes. Uh, so, for example, this point is 54, but here it's going to be 0.15, so background morph is not going to work. That's why I copied twice, so I can change the point order in these two objects. So I'm just first I'm just going to clear the, the UV map information here, I don't need it. And now in each object I'm going to select this polygon and this polygon and run mesh recognitor. And this polygon and this polygon and mesh recognitor. Okay, mesh recognitor doesn't work in Catmull Clark, so you have to take the subdivision, apply the plugin, and if you want, put it back up. Uh, actually, I don't need this one anymore. Or I need, yes, I need. <laughs> yeah, before I delete it, I actually have to apply background morph. Okay, so here we go. Now I have this object picking up the same shape with the morph but the base is still looks like looks like um, the subdivided so using PLG here so I'm gonna do the same unweld everything make UV relax align pack and now you'll notice that even after I apply the morph, okay, so I pick up the original shape, shape, and I delete the morph because I don't need it anymore. Um, I merge everything, and now I have two identical objects, okay, but different UVs. So in this one, this UV, for example, this polygons here look like this okay more much more alike the their look in the 3d object than here okay more examples uh, for example this tiny guys here whoops this guys here look like this here okay not so tiny and the shape it's it's matching much more the 3d object okay same for the the highly known planar polygons okay this one looks like this here but in the older UV it looked like this okay so this is the differences uh, between these two methods. Uh, this one gives a bit of trouble, but uh, you see the results are better because basically your telling is uh, is that here you'll have more pixels to this object, to this polygon. Sorry, you have more pixels to fill this than you'll have with this UV okay uh, I made some more examples here uh, using this object um, so for example uh, an, un an unwrap okay notice how the unwrap uh, has the same problem using PLG um, so there's no good uh, matching of the shape of the polygons in 3D space in the UV space okay but if I use the same method okay notice how there's a good matching okay so here with the corrected version and the straight version okay so basically that's it uh, next uh, part I'm going to use 3D codes to show some stuff with uh, texture baking and UV